Hello, everyone. Welcome to Samsung 837. My name is Ivy Cho. I am on Samsung's public relations team, and I am so beyond excited to be taking you through 837 Next, which is our series of weekly events this week, which will feature live panels and discussions all around NFT NYC week. So this week, we are so proud to be bringing together NFT artists, creators, and emerging tech innovators during the fourth annual NFT NYC week. And so with that, yeah, give it up. <laughs> and so with that, thank you all for being here with us on day one. I personally love Samsung 837 in the heart of New York City's meatpacking district. I honestly pinch myself every day that this is my office, seriously. And so for those of us who are joining from the metaverse or from the Discord channel, thank you so much for tuning in. Wish you could be here. There are people on all three levels of the store. It's insane. So as a little bit of background, we built this flagship experience store in 2016, not only as a place to showcase the latest and greatest of Samsung products, but also as a hub for art, fashion, tech, gaming, and culture to collide. And so we are seeing this happen in the NFT space, so it was only natural that we celebrate what's next in the industry right here. Okay, so Axie Infinity, why we're all here. The blockchain-based video game that pioneered the concept of pay to play, pay, sorry, play to earn in NFT gaming. <laughs> that is pretty impressive. <laughs> and also, how cute are the Axies? Seriously, how cute are they? I love them. So in a minute, we'll hear from a panel of experts discussing the past, present, and future of gaming. And so to guide the conversation, I am very excited to introduce to you program lead for eSports and content creators, Andrew Campbell. All right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Look at this venue. I've been on the road for four and a half weeks doing nothing but Axie Infinity. I'm tired, but I feel great, and it's amazing to see so many familiar faces in here. I walked in, and I saw about 10 people that I recognized in the first 10 seconds I was here. Bullish. Uh, but seriously, thank you so much for joining us at this amazing venue. We've got a really cool panel coming up, and I say we don't delay any further. Let's start bringing them out on stage. First up, we've got Ariana Simpson to join us on this amazing panel. Give it up. You'll certainly recognize our next guest here. It's Mr. Jiho, Jeffrey Zerlin, one of the masterminds behind Axie Infinity. Up next, we've got the myth, the man, the legend. It's O Shiny. And the head of Samsung Next, we've got David Lee to join us here in this beautiful venue. All right, so let's dive in. We're gonna start with the elephant in the room and talk about some market conditions. Ariana, I wanna start with you. You've got a, a very big brain when it comes to investing in the crypto space, and I'm super curious how you navigate these times. Do, do the bearish conditions change anything about your investment thesis? Well, I won't comment on the size of my brain, but I do have a very, good, very big fund. So um, we just announced a four and a half billion dollar fund, and I think that, Thank you. That really speaks to the size of the opportunity we see. Um, you know, prices fluctuate one direction or the other, but um, I've been in the space for close to 10 years and I've, I've seen that what really matters is continuing to build through the cycles. Um, and so, you know, that's what we're really focused on is finding and backing and supporting the best entrepreneurs who are building the future of the space. Um, one thing I'll say is that the, the, environment is completely different than the last bear market. At the time, um, I had just launched my fund that I, I ran before I joined Andreessen, and it was kind of dark days, honestly. There wasn't a lot launched yet, and that made it really, you know, hard to keep the faith in some ways, because what you were thinking about was, like, the price, because what else was there to do? Um, of course, there was a lot of really important building happening behind the scenes, uh, but that wasn't always obvious. And so now, I think... a, a 
enormous difference is the fact that we have a ton of really exciting, um, you know, things launched. Anything from base layer chains to things at the application layer to games. Um, so there's there's just a lot more to do in the ecosystem that has nothing to do with prices. So. That's sort of where I'm focused. And and look at all the people here. They didn't exist in the last bear market. It's True. amazing. Hello, exactly. everybody. Yeah. Woo. And hello to everyone in Decentraland also. I love that we're streaming it on that. Yeah, it's super cool. We're on a number of different platforms right now. Um, I, what about like the, the startups that are really focused on growth and new user acquisition? During the bull market, it seems like it's hard to not grow with users. But I know Jiho often likes to mention that the bear market's a good time to build, right? Axie Infinity was born in bearish conditions. In some ways, we, we almost feel right at home. We prefer building in these types of environments, right? Like, this is what we were born in. We like being the underdog. It's normal to us, right? Like it was only for a very brief period, right? The 2021 bull market, things got very exuberant. People got really excited, rightfully so. And now we're back to the bread and butter, which is building, shipping product, building out the team, getting the best community members in the world, getting the best team members in the world, trying things that have never been done before, right? Like we have to experiment our way through the bear market and one thing that I noticed from last cycle is we can always kind of theorize on what the next big innovation is going to be, but it's never clear until it actually hits, right? Like last bear market, we saw the launch of Uniswap, Axie, right? Like we turned experience points into love potions and right, the rest is history. So there's always these weird, strange decisions that actually come from listening to users that spur forward the next zero to one moment. So yeah, I, it's, it's perfectly normal to us to be in this type of environment. I think a lot of the Axie community members that have been here since 2018, 2019, they remember this. And in many ways, right, like bear market, bull markets are actually a little bit schizophrenic. You don't get to sleep. Everything is very exciting. <laughs> it's it, it's You're hard looking good, by the way. Up. You lost a lot of weight. I hope it's not because of the bull. <laughs> uh, yeah, I asked if that was by design or by uh, you know by accident. But you look great. It's uh, you know we we say on Twitter right like all the Twitter influencers are saying like in the bear market you gotta like get healthy, you gotta get fit, go outside, touch some grass. I tried doing that actually a little bit and it's been uh, it's good luck. Off. You know you talk about innovation, uh, Jiho, uh, but in the bear market. Things that seem obvious in the bull market, like actually building community, become a lot more clear. You can see through a lot of the noise. It's so hard to build a community when everyone is trying to get your attention, when it's all about the price of something. And when, as soon as that goes away, oh, there's another human right here. Maybe we can talk. Maybe we can experiment. We can start a DAO together. We can go in a Discord group. We can play this new game. And that's really how you form great communities. I love it. Uh, Jiho, maybe you could narrow in on uh, Axie Origin a little bit, because I remember the last NFT NYC. It was November of last year. Times were much different. Origin wasn't ready quite yet, but um, there were a number of quotes where you talked about building games that are fun and, and using that as a portal to bring new users into the ecosystem. Um, how have things looked with Origin so far? H have we been achieving those goals? So our approach to building products is to build experiences that bring back that childhood magic of nostalgia and combine that with a new futuristic twist, right? And with Origin, I was just in DC showing Axie to people that have never seen it before. And Origin, I think, just brought that child, childlike sense of wonder where they could just press the buttons, learn a little bit, learn how to play, get into it. So super, yeah, like we just released a patch for Origin that's been getting a lot of really great reviews from the community. And yeah, we've seen 600, I think I just checked, 670,000 downloads already in early access, right? Like, I think- Let's go. All right. <laughs> right like Blizz I think Blizzard just released a game, right? Like, and they got 5 million downloads and they're really excited, right? So I think that shows, right? We're actually putting up numbers in early access that are comparable to the big boys, to the established studios that we're looking to actually disrupt. My cousins are here today, I think, and they actually got me into Diablo, to StarCraft, 
So it's always been one of my dreams to have a game that had more traction than a Blizzard game, and we're on the right track. I can say just coming from the Philippines where we did our first Origin tournament, it was two days, it had an open qualifier. A number of players came up to me and said, I didn't really get it until I played in this tournament and now I see some of the competitive potential. I'm excited to go home and stream Origin and like really go deep into the competitive layers. Of course, as the esports guy, that makes me bullish as hell. But um, I do want to talk about the play and earn or play to earn side because David, I know that's something you've commented on a little bit and I'm curious how you like, kind of analyze the space right now as a whole and, and maybe where you think play to earn is going in terms of sustainability. Um, so first of all, thank you for, having, for coming here on behalf of Samsung and Samsung Next. Um, I don't know if it's an analysis, it's just listening to the founders. Jiho talked about listening to the users. And as early stage investors, I think the key is you just, uh, it's simple but not easy, you just go where the geeks are. And, when I met, and I say that with affection, um, and when I met Chiho for the first time, he said with such conviction, you can't build a community in a bull market. I thought you were gonna say he said he was a geek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His hair's too good for that, so yeah. Um, uh, so for us, you just look at where the developers are, where the builders are, and I think this general idea of earning what you build, it's timeless. And I think for the first time you can do that in the digital sense, and Axie Infinity is the first company that's been able to do that at scale. And so for us, um, we like to say with this market, um, nothing's different, but everything's changed. So the long-term vision of where we're going, of where Jiho's going, hasn't changed, but the terrain's different, and that's gonna happen for any startup whether you're Airbnb, Snap, Twitter, or Axie Infinity. I like that, a very poetic way to say it. And, and Oshiny, you have a pretty diverse investment portfolio, right? Dapper Labs, Yat, some other play to earn games, certainly Axie Infinity, you've got one of the sexiest Axies in the world uh, under your command. Galadriel, the Quad Mystic. Ooh, beautiful. Yeah. Not beautiful. many Quad beautiful. Mystics out there. But like, what do you look for as signs of success in terms of the projects you invest in, um, regardless of, of market conditions? I'm curious how you evaluate these kind well, of projects. Well, I'll tell you it interests us. It's, it's really tough to say what success looks like today, but I'm really focused on the expansion of identity, how you move into the digital space, and all of a sudden you're given so many more tools to express yourself. Who are you in this digital world? And gaming in particular, Axie Infinity pro provides a portal into this new ecosystem where all of a sudden you have all these tools you never had before. You have a bank in your web browser. You have these assets that you can use. Whether it's a game or you're actually talking to someone across the world and you build a business together within that game, that's really what we're excited about. That's super cool. Uh, I, I love your well-rounded essence in the space. I remember listening to so many of your Twitter spaces and I'm curious, like, how do you stay so positive all the time in a space that has so much noise, so much chaos going on? I feel like you have such a great filter of finding the coolest projects and presenting them to the world. What, what's you. the secret there? Thank how you. do you do it? You know, I have to say that I feel very lucky that when I found this space, uh, almost five years ago, there was nothing but people. There were ideas, there, there wasn't really any company that was formed, and there's someone in the front row who got me really into Axie, Cloud White. Cloud White. Uh, and it was just through conversation with him, uh, and seeing the infancy of anything gives you this perspective, where you can take a step back and say, you know, I remember when it was just a small community of people, I remember when I could just connect with people and it wasn't about the money, it wasn't about these huge companies, a company going from zero to a billion dollars in two months or whatever. And that was, that was really beautiful and I try to reflect on that every time things get really quick, every time the market gets overheated, it's about the people and there's so many special people in this space. There's really unlimited. There's so many people here tonight, like just meet the people around you. I promise you they're incredibly interesting people and that's really what I continually go back to. The people in this space are amazing. And just to build on that, so we had an event in Miami and this was peak boom and we saw the Axie community there, and I was kind of blown away by the diversity. It wasn't just the Philippines, there were some people from Ohio, Central, you know, the heartland of America, some people from Silicon Valley, and when I peek out at this crowd, I, I see some of the people that I saw there, 
And that is very different. That's different. Um, it, it's reminiscent of what Airbnb had, of what other community-driven sites had and services. And so I think every great, anything great goes through a near-death experience. And every near-death experience makes you stronger. And so when I see the familiar faces, it, it comes back to the people. It's pretty staggering, actually. Like a, a bear market is nobody's in here. And this place is packed, so that speaks to them. Yeah, and I think, yeah, very much, please. Um, you know, one thing about Axie Infinity that I always go back to, this is an anecdote I actually shared with O'Shiny on a podcast we did a couple months ago. There's a member of our staff here, Stuart, that works on our esports team, and he was somebody that really didn't get crypto when he was becoming interested in Axie Infinity, but it provided this window to allow him to really learn and see the value of crypto. We went on vacation together and he paid for the vacation by grinding on one of my scholarship accounts. And that SLP is what actually paid for his trip that went back into my pocket. And on the trip, he looked at me and just said, I get it now, it's real. This is real money. That's so cool. I was like, I know, welcome to the rest of us, man. That's so awesome. <laughs> Um, but I think that's why some of that loyalty sticks around regardless of market conditions because when people think of Axie or whatever it was that got them into the ecosystem, they associate that with a powerful learning experience. And maybe you can speak to that, Jiho. I think one of our fundamental beliefs is that one of the most substantial things you can do for somebody is to actually introduce them to this technology, to get them onboarded, downloading a wallet, learning how to send transactions. Um, it's something that far more than the monetary benefit in the short term, I think it's, it's a life skill, right? Like you are not gonna be able to operate in modern society if you don't know how to do these things moving forward. And it's like learning how to use the internet in 1980, right? 1970s even. Um, it's a huge, it's an educational opportunity and that's something that we're thinking a lot about is like do we create this curriculum, right? Like how to learn about Web3 like more formalized, right? Like an Axie branded course. It's something that we're mulling over. It, it feels so good to teach. It feels so good to create um, a MetaMask for someone, to create a crypto wallet, to show them how to use it. When I first joined the crypto industry, and Ariana, maybe you can talk to this over a decade ago, everyone was so welcoming. At that point, people would just give you Bitcoin. Say, hey, I, I want to give you Bitcoin. I want you to make an account. And of course, most of our answers were, no, that sounds crazy. Um, and that was yeah, I remember for a while, Brian Armstrong was going to bars and would send people a full Bitcoin, like hundreds of them in an evening. Um, so I've, I've met a lot of people who said that that's who gave them their first Bitcoin. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, but I, I think, you know, very supportive of more Axie educational content. But I think you guys have already done such a great job introducing people to the space as it is because... For many people, you know, Axie was the first thing that got them excited enough to want to actually get involved because they've heard about it from friends and things like that. And so I think you guys are already well on the way in that regard. I have some college friends that are here today, and I think they'll know. They'll say, like, I was The real not, DGENs? I was not a great <laughs> student, right? Like, I preferred to learn by doing, right? And I think that's actually what Axie is at its core, right? It's like, you, it's not about reading something and, yeah, it, it's about actually using the technology and, and learning about it because it's fun and it's something that you want to do. Like there, so obviously we do need to make onboarding smoother and that's, that, that's like in my opinion, it's just a product problem that takes some time. But I also think that it needs to be fun. There has to be like that emotional benefit to drive people to actually go down the rabbit hole because it actually only takes about two minutes <laughs> to, to get onboarded. Um, that desire, that fun, that interest, that spark is actually what's needed to kind of cross the chasm. Yeah, the fear always seems overwhelming of learning something new. And once you dive in, you realize it's not actually as hard as you thought it was. Ariana, I'm curious, like when you're scouting projects, do, is there like a, a bucket on the investment chart of bringing new users into the ecosystem? Like, is that something that is highly valued or is it also a balance of engagement within the ecosystem? Yeah, I think that's something we think a lot about actually, because, you know, we've been looking for what we call the iPhone moment for crypto. And, um, you know, I think you could, you could argue that maybe Axie was it or it's yet to come. But 
um, you know, having a product that's so good and so compelling and so exciting um, that it brings people into the fold and actually gets them to overcome whatever technical hurdles there might be um, is really important. And I think NFTs were probably, you know, the first category, of course, like, DeFi brought a bunch of people into the space, but NFTs really, I think, broke through into mainstream consciousness um, to a degree that we hadn't seen before, even for users who were not DeFi degen types. And so it was cool because, you know, there was for the first time a, a broader base of people who were actually interested in this technology and saw applications that went beyond kind of trading or speculating or something like that. So definitely. Um, yeah, I think that's that's something we think a lot about and our whole thesis around Web3 games has been that, you know, we see it as one of the most powerful ways to onboard potentially hundreds of millions of, of users um, into the space. Any big verticals you've got your eyes on or new innovations that could benefit from blockchain technology and anything you can share there that, you know, even in the bearish times, promising ideas that people have that are still under construction? Sure. I mean, I, I think that eventually it will touch almost everything. Um, you know, maybe the simplest analog is, is the internet in the sense that it used to be that you had internet companies and people would raise funds to invest in, inter you know, web 2.0 or whatever, uh, or 1.0 back in the day. But nowadays, you know, basically everything runs on the internet. You could have a lawnmower business that, you know, gets its customers through the internet. Like, everything runs through the internet, even if it's not a tech company. Um, and so, you know, I believe that over time, Web3 components, whether it's tokens or NFTs or other parts of the stack, will basically become embedded in everything. So it's, you know, it'd be hard for me to name something that I don't, that I think this won't impact. Um, but, you know, more specifically, I think one, one area that's really interesting is DAOs, because they've really started to... Um, I think enable a degree of creativity that we hadn't seen, at least in this form, uh, previously. Because the, the barrier to entry, the hurdles of starting a company, um, I think are a lot higher. And so it sort of dampens people's ability to kind of experiment. But, you know, DAOs, which I really think about as internet native LLCs, have shown a huge ability to kind of foster interesting projects and bring people together in novel ways. Um, so I'm very excited to see what, what happens in that category. I love that. And David, I'd love to hear your thoughts on DAOs specifically and wh where you see the potential there. Because for some DAOs, I see, wow, this is great decentralized governance. For other DAOs, I see chaos. I see operations being taken for granted and glossed over. Well, we'll just figure it out with some tokens. And anyone that's run a business knows it's way more complicated than that. Organizing humans is actually really hard. Um, curious about your thoughts overall on the state of DAOs. Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, organizing humans is very hard. And there's a reason why the corporation exists. Unfortunately, I went to law school, so you like learn <laughs> about Condolences. Stuff. I know, I know. Um, but I think it's just a matter of coordinating collective action. And I think before you needed to do that by contract, and the contract was you work for me and so through employee-employer relationships. And that was a more efficient way of just coordinating action and accomplishing something. And I think, I think the breakthrough with smart contracts is all of this is done with code, that code is law. And so I think it's super interesting, but I, I mean, I, I hate to be the, um, I think it will take time because it's not obvious to me right now what is, um, I think, DAOs will exist with next to corporations and LLCs the way e-commerce exists next to sort of brick and mortars. It's not going to replace it. For some things, it will be a superior way of coordinating and organizing people. And for other people, for other means, the corporation will be fine. So um, I, I think of it more of a tool as less of a technology in a way, in the same way that wikis were a tool of coordinating collective thoughts. And so in, in, in the same way that Wikipedia will p probably outlast any internet company, I think a lot of DAOs will outlast and be as durable as, as many corporations. 
Jiho, I'd love to hear your thoughts on DAOs, especially since that's been a big part of the Axie Infinity thesis. As the esports lead, I often think about esports as a vehicle to distribute tokens to some of our most engaged, thoughtful users that should benefit from having governance over the ecosystem. So, uh, to me, DAOs are hyper scalable organizations, they're the hive mind. And anyone who's gone from scaling a company to, from like five to 150 to 500 employees knows that, like, actually, like, build, uh, scaling out a company is like, there are all these operational costs. It's really <laughs> intense to manage all these different people. Whereas I think in Web3 with DAOs, you have this structure that allows for native incentive alignment between millions of people simultaneously, where everybody, because they own certain assets, they identify with each other, they say, this is who I am, because I own this, and because I own this, I need to do this. They wake up in the morning saying, okay, like it's time to do this for this movement, for this group that I'm a part of, and they don't need any centralized company necessarily to get them to do what they're doing, right? It's like basically, it's kind of like a, a paid volunteer without having to have all this infrastructure to basically support them, right? The incentive alignment is from day one. I actually came from the Axie community. I was not a founder at the beginning. I came in, I bought three Axies, and I started asking questions around, what can I do to help? And I think that's what a DAO is at its core. Yeah, and just to build on that, it's sort of what Ariana said. I don't think DAOs need to have their iPhone moment. They're just in the background, and they are the way and they're the foundation on which these projects are built. Um, and so for that, I think it's, it's something that is significant, but um, maybe not as important as, uh, or maybe not the same as it's just a tool of building new, new um, products or behavior like an, like NFT or that sort of technology. So it sounds like if, if I can kind of summarize what you're saying is that not every Web3 company has to be a DAO. For some, that'll be a great tool that'll serve them, but for others, a traditional model might actually make more sense and that doesn't necessarily take away from the value proposition of using Web3 Rails on the back end or using NFTs as some sort of membership structure or, you know, pick a model. <laughs> I think one of the characteristics of the modern age is that we have this kind of a la carte system of these a la carte views around governance systems, right? Just like there are countries in the world that are saying, hey, like we like this about America's government, but we don't like this, right? They're kind of picking and choosing the best things. I think that will also emerge with DAOs where you will see some DAOs that have more of a ship captain at the helm. It's more like a Singapore, a Taiwan, a South Korea model. And then you'll also have more egalitarian flat uh, DAOs. And I think both will be considered DAOs. They'll just be considered different, even competing or, uh, alternative systems of governance. Awesome, so as we get closer to the end here, I have a little bit of an open-ended positive question that maybe we can wrap up on, and I'd love to just kind of go through the panel here and hear everyone's answers. Ariana, you can go first. It's about being optimistic. During these bearish times, how do you stay optimistic? How do you keep a positive mental attitude and any advice to the folks out there that are experiencing this bear market? for the first time, right? Crypto has more, you know, more new users than ever before, and a lot of people are really struggling right now. Any advice or words that you can send their way? Yeah, I'm very lucky because most of my job consists of talking to really smart founders, building very cool things. Um, and so when a big part of your day is spent doing that, it's hard not to be optimistic, uh, not to, invert all your questions, but um, I feel like there's just so much being built now. And as I was saying, there's, there's just so much that's been built since the last bear market. So, you know, it sounds simple, but my biggest piece of advice is just talk to people who are building things um, because all of that is completely detached from prices. Um, and if you focus there, the money generally follows, but that's where the magic happens. And so I think build, or if you can build stuff yourself, by all means, um, I think that's, that's where the uh, most exciting things are. There is a shortage of Web3 engineers. So you're from, if you are remotely interested in writing code or building dApps, do it. Just dive in. Just start building that zombie thing. That's you a classic tutorial. It. Get out there and chip away at it. It is a process, but it's a valuable one. Uh, Jiho, how do you stay positive? Aside from hitting the gym. I mean, again, you look great. <laughs> right? 
So one thing that I want to say is like I have extreme empathy for everyone who's going through hard times right now. Like I went through that. I was I came in in 2017 December. I think ETH was $800, $1,400. That we then went to see it hit 50. Sky Mavis, or it wasn't even called Sky Mavis back then. Axie Infinity. We had like $30,000 left, um, and you know we weren't paying ourselves for for months. So we've gone through that. It's really, really painful, but I think during a bear market, continue to stay engaged, continue to learn new things. I think sometimes you have to right, like slow down a little bit so that you can go faster in the future. And bear markets allow you to give you that time to build positions, build relationships, and build systems that are going to have like compounding uh, returns in the future, whether that's, yeah, you know, in that, at the asset level or the relationship level. Um, so I think, yeah, just staying engaged. I think, like, you can, don't have to, like, be so intense, too. Like, if you, if you feel like you're me you mentally cannot take it, like, I think it's okay to, like, disconnect. Like, sleep a little bit, right? Like, nobody got sleep during the, bear, the bull market. Like, let's be honest, right? So I think it's okay to, like, go back to hitting, like, eight hours, nine hours of sleep. And I think things are going to work themselves out. So to summarize, your advice is to chill. <laughs> <laughs> well said. I, I think that was a great answer, Jiho. I, I always tend to look, I go back and I say, okay, I know what we're doing is special. Where are the places in the world that are really utilizing this technology um, that are really having their lives changed? And it was Axie that gave me that portal to understand that you can build this new globalized job market. People are being connected through this new bank account that they can all share in their web browser. And so I look at the innovation that we have, the people all around the world are using today to change their lives. That keeps me positive. I mean, for me, it's just looking at this crowd, um, for, you know, as the uh, gray beard on this group, you know, as somebody who's 52, I would change places with anybody here who's 20 years younger than I am in a heartbeat. Because I think the next 20 years are going to be some of the most interesting years in software. And one thing I'll say is every boom bust period is more extreme than the last one. That's just empirically, you just see it. And this boom bust period was more extreme in terms of time compression and volatility than 2018. And it's just, it's just part of it. And these near death experiences, especially in crypto, right? I, I think everybody here understands that anytime there's an attack and the double spend problem that's been solved isn't reversed, we're still here. And if you're still here, it, it just gets stronger. And so it's just part of it. And the next boom bust cycle will be more extreme. And the last thing I'll say is for those who really love it, I'm envious because it's gonna be so much fun. And it's okay to take the time to chill and just, be, and just ask yourself, do I love it? And if you don't love it, take a break. And I think now is a time to just reflect and say, do I love this? Am I willing to spend all of my time now here because it's going to be lonely for the next year? And if you do, or if that's the choice you make, it's going to be awesome. So, Fantastic answers all around. Uh, and as, as someone who's been watching crypto for the better part of 10 years and was too scared to invest, I finally bought some Litecoins in the last bull cycle, and I sold them at the end of the last bear cycle because I didn't believe. I lost faith. And then here I am years after that, right back into it and all in on Axie Infinity. So for better or for worse, I'm riding this roller coaster all the way. And I, I think what you said was just perfect, David. Something to add there, Jiha? I was just going to say that we tried sending you axes in 2018 and you rejected them. It's true. Hey, I still have them. I still have them. But I did never log in and use them until they offered me a job. So that is very true. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Give it up for our thank amazing you. panel. Thank you so much to everyone that joined us on Discord, on Facebook, and Decentraland, and everywhere else. It's been an absolute pleasure, but we're going to have some fun here and enjoy this evening. Thank you so much for joining us, and please enjoy this beautiful venue, and thank you again to Samsung for hosting us. Thank you. Thank you, Samsung.
Thank you. So thank you to everyone here for joining us and for those tuning in from Discord and 837X into Centraland. Um, please come back. We have a full week of events, specifically tomorrow at noon Eastern time. We're hosting an art blocks discussion about the future of digital and art display. So art blocks is the first of its kind platform focused on generative NFTs that are permanently stored on the Ethereum blockchain. So you really don't want to miss this. Um, don't forget to join us on Twitter and or Discord at Samsung US or into Centraland at 837X to learn more about all of our programming this week. And with that, I am very excited to introduce very shortly DJ Stacks, who has a great set for us lined up. So everyone stay tuned in the metaverse. Take it away. <laughs>